The Witching Hour is close at hand, this time on Chinivision. Some games, as soon as you mention their name, you instantly regard them as classics, whether or not you've played them in the past 30 years or not. And Cauldron by Palace Software is one of those games. Highly lauded back when it was originally published. Lots of great reviews and a lot of emphasis on the rather superb graphics and cover artwork as well. So I thought, well, you know, how YouTube channels are supposed to tie in with times of year, right? So say doing Christmas videos at Christmas, Halloween videos at Halloween. But this being Chinny Vision, everything being unplanned, well, you know, Halloween's come and gone. But it doesn't matter because you could be watching this at any time. So I thought I'd revisit this game. I haven't played it for a number of years. I originally got it on a double pack by High Tech with Cauldron 1 and Cauldron 2. Incidentally, if you've got one of those packs and you don't have, I think it's Cauldron 2 on the B side and you've got another game, then uh, you're rich or richer because that's a duplication error and that's quite rare and collectible. Of course, we're going to start off on the Commodore 64 and you get the little introduction animation with the witch wandering around. Game designed by Steve Brown, who went on to do Barbarian, and as a result of this game in Cauldron 2, got more creative freedom with that game. Basically, a pumpkin has stolen your broomstick, and you have to go out and get cast a spell in order to, or you get to collect all the objects, cast a spell, and then go and defeat the evil pumpkin, which is, of course, uh, a role reversal from Cauldron 2, where you play the pumpkin, you're getting revenge against the witch. Palace Software, a division of Palace Video, and uh, they were based in an old porn cinema in Soho, with the programming being done in the former projection room. Apparently they used to play cricket in that room as well, using a CPC as a cricket bat. Some people will be insulted by that, but I think, well, if you're going to play with a micro with for cricket, then uh, CPC is the best bat you can come up with. So you start off at your house, and you can only take off in the clearing. So you come out of your house, and all the ingredients have got to be taken back to the house. There's power-ups or things that put up your magic level, little kind of uh, clouds you can go into. Some of them are hidden in the trees, and some of them are in the sky. You lose energy as you shoot, as you can see it going down. Every time a baddie hits you, you also lose energy. Two versions of this floating about, by the way, where, and I don't know which version this is, because apparently one version uh, for a re-release was made easier, so less or so died there. You get less deductions when the enemies hit you, because it's really hard. And that's, that's a common criticism of this game. We've got to find keys, because there's two sections to this game. There's a flying along section, we collect keys, and then you go underground. But let's go over to the Amstrad CPC. Both my C64 owning mate and I on my CPC had this game both on the high tech re release. Starts off where you don't get all the animation with the C64, we do get a beefy soundtrack. I'm going to venture to say I prefer it to the C64 version. Oh, let's get those down votes in now. And it's lovely and colourful. Uh, however, you'll notice there's sprite problems every time your witch crosses over the background. There's, what's it, Zor? I can never remember. Um, there's, a, there's a sprite thing on the CPC. If you don't do the sprites properly, you basically clash with the background. It's not colour clash, it's just a, uh, a coding thing, either you, you, in how you determine how your sprites cross over things. And yeah, these guys have not mastered that. It's also very slow. If you saw screenshots of this in a magazine, you think, well, oh, and you don't hit things either. If you saw screenshots of this in the magazines, you'd have thought, oh, it looks just like the C64 version, but more colourful. It's really slow. Over to the Spectrum. I believe this was an outer house conversion for Palace. I could be wrong there for the Spectrum. And it's very flickery. Very flickery. And it suffers from that CPC speed problem as well. And the horrible scrolling. CPC's flick screen, and the other versions of flick screen, this version has a weird scrolling thing going where everything stops and it scrolls along and all the sprites disappear. 
bit like Rig Attack the other week. Uh, without, but the sprites didn't disappear in that. Right, we've got one key, and we need to find another key. The keys are colour coded, apart from on the CPC where they're not. And I haven't worked out if the keys are specific to each door on the CPC, but certainly on the Spectrum and the C64, you've got to get the right colour key for the right coloured door. So we have to go and find a red door or a purple or magenta. Sorry, magenta. It is a spectrum. A magenta d d door. Again, if these graphics were static, you'd look at them and go, these are pretty good. And then it all starts moving and it's just not. So we're still looking for this door. Will there be one along here? The keys position differently every game, so you can make a map of where the doors are, but don't bother making a map of where the keys are, because they move. Red door, red key, off we go. And by the way, when you're walking on the ground, you are powerless. You cannot fire. And here we are in the underground caverns, and likewise, you cannot fire. So you have to avoid the baddies. And by the way, collision detection on the spectrum is pretty um, dodgy, as you go. <laughs> yeah, there's a problem with cauldron. All right, certainly on the Spectrum, um, you, A, the collision detection ain't great, and B, all the versions suffer from... Well, we'll see. We'll see in a minute, but you will have seen there. So, doing this... Got the same key, red key, on the C64. Let's go and find the red door. So, we can determine that the C64 is a scrolling game. The Spectrum is kind of a scrolling game, but not, and the CPC is flick screen. Now, you've got to pick your landing position very carefully, because if you land in the wrong place, and there's inertia as well on your broomstick on the C64. And I picked the wrong spot, because if you're as much as one pixel out, you die. Did I tell you this game's frustrating? In we go. This should be the same cavern as on the Spectrum. No music during the gameplay. But when you're above ground, you get that doo doo nee 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 Sound effect noises, you're flying, and you go underground, and it all becomes very quiet. It's such a polished game, that's rather an oversight. You'd think there'd be some kind of atmospheric noises. I think there are for the lava sections, but yeah. Well, so where do we go now? Where do we go down? Which side? Because we don't know what we're going to be jumping into. It's a, it's a leap of faith, and look, it went wrong. There is no logic or reason as to how the screens interlock with each other. You quite often have to make blind leaps of faith into the next screen and chances are you'll get it wrong so let's try now assuming we're going to go right here or left well let's decide you know which way should we go try jumping down there no it was left it's a lottery we do get lava sound effects now it's a complete and utter lottery on the cpc where i haven't determined if the keys are color coded or not because they don't seem to be same underground section by the way the underground sections seem to have two doors um to enter through so as far as i can see i could be wrong there i'd rather not consult maps before i play games like oh oh how well planned out this game was how well thought out and considerate the programmers were Do I jump down there? No. It looked like the kind of distance I could jump down, but apparently not. So we have to jump, and we jump up there, and we hit something which we couldn't have seen before. We're down, but luckily the collision detection is better on the spectrum because I can land on the edge of the platform. I can jump down there, which is about the same distance if you jump in the air as I would have fallen onto the other platform. Ugh. There's a reason why... Uh, CPC owners talk about Sorcery Plus a lot, and this game not so much. It's because the CPC has Sorcery Plus and the C64 and Spectrum don't. They've just got ordinary, uh, less polished Sorcery. So they talk about Cauldron more. This is another underground section and another leap of faith. Uh, game over. It's such a polished game, and it kind of blinds you to all the massive inadequacies in here. Okay, it's 1985, but 
wouldn't you, when you were planning this out and testing it, think these blind leaps of faith would seem unreasonable? Or are you such great game players you don't really care? Do get some sound effects here on the sp- ah, the, the. I don't know. I mean, it's so easy to be kind of blinded by how attractive this game looks. And how the sprites that it handles and all the inertia on the C64 version, which is lovely. It feels so modern having inertia on a sprite when you're in the air. But... The guys who program the game know where they, they, they've put the platforms there. They know where they're leaping. And... Oh, to just do that there and... Same section on the CPC. And I, again, if you saw this as a still screenshot, it would look lovely. But it, it's not. And there's no reason for the CPC to be this slow. None. You get people, or C64 runners, looking at games like this on the CPC and going, oh, the CPC's rubbish. It doesn't need to be this bad. This is just poor coding. That sprite passing in front of that wall there doesn't need to happen. That is, that isn't just poor coding. That's total and utter cannot be bothered. Remember, there's also Chini Vision 2, where there's a link in the description below which is little bits and pieces, less polished stuff, just stuff I want to do for, for for any reason, really. It might not even be retro gaming stuff. So check that out below and, and do subscribe. Remember to subscribe and click notify for this channel as well. Otherwise, you won't know that when there's a new video up. So quiet. The game's in effect silent unless you hit something on the CPC underground. We've got power up. Oh, we've got we've got enough magic anyway. That that's what the power up is. And by the way, I don't know if it's just my Spectrum version because I tried a couple of versions and I couldn't find any power up sections on the Specky. And that was a vase, by the way, that I need for the spell. So that's one of the objects I need to collect. So we will now head out of this level to a, another door and come out the other side, hopefully. It's also pedestrian. But yet in 1985, 1986, you would have looked at this and gone, well, again, you see, I don't remember the CPC magazines raving about this because Sorcery Plus was out, which was a much better looking, faster, smoother, better planned out game. And, and that's really interesting. Oh, there's not much that. <sighs> So on C64, I've cheated, obviously, and got all of the objects. So now we go to the door nearest my house on the right. Don't make a rookie mistake when you first start playing the game and go to the first door on the right, because that's where the evil pumpkin lives. So you just go in there and you'll basically die. And yeah, that's what I did first time I played this game again after all these years. This door here, that's where the pumpkin lives. I've got my spell. I've got the green key. I'm completely cheating, cheating, cheating. With 99% magic. Right, I've got to follow that pumpkin to the end of level. He will just bounce out the way. End screen. Got to jump up here. And you will lose a massive amount of energy because the pumpkin will, f the little pumpkin will fly at you. Well done, you've completed the game. The pumpkin is dead. Long live the pumpkin. Cauldron 2 comes along soon with the same engine. The 1980s producer of Doctor Who, John Nathan Turner, had a saying. The memory cheats. I.e. people talked about old episodes of Doctor Who that they hadn't seen for 20 years as if they were absolutely perfect and wonderful and the modern day stuff was rubbish. With Cauldron, the memory cheats. My memory said this was a really polished, playable game that I would find highly enjoyable. What I found was a game that was graphically polished and in terms of the sprite physics, also polished. But it's a really badly planned out game in terms of those underground sections. No matter which version of this you're playing, because they've all got the same map, you're making leaps of faith into the darkness, in effect. Will you land on something? Won't you land on something? 
and it's a test of memory. And I hate games that require you to memorize things because they killed you one way the first time. Rick Dangerous is another game like that. You have to remember what to do or there will be some kind of unfair death. But Cauldron is part of the development of video games. C64 version obviously is way above the other two versions. They're quite poor. On the 64, it's very polished. Well, it looks very polished, but it's still a very frustrating and, and badly thought out game for those underground levels. On the surface, it's wonderful. It's like a, a dessert that comes to your table and it's all wonderfully finished off with cream and cherry on the top. And once you get inside it and get delve down into it, it's just cheap sponge and nasty ice cream full of sugar and, and no flavor. The CPC version is needlessly bad. It's too slow, it's far, far too slow. And the sprite issues where, where your sprite crosses over other objects and is needless. It doesn't need to do that. Other games don't do that. That's a rookie mistake. The Spectrum version is really the weakest of the lot. Doesn't look good, doesn't play well. The collision detection is dreadful. It's appalling. And these sprite flickers, and I can't believe Power Software could in all honesty, put that game out and think that was anywhere near the quality of the C64 version. You may have fond memories of this game, but if you do, I'd suggest you go back and play it and revisit it, unless you were an elite Cauldron player and can remember all those jumps. I suspect you, like me, will find this a polished but deeply flawed and frustrating computer game.